Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Robinson again, and we're going to continue our studies. We are talking about percent problems, all three types of them. Here's some vocabulary you should know. Percent means out of 100. The percent symbol is that. Of means multiply most times, and is means equal to. Good words to know. There is a button on our calculator that we use if you're using this uh, TI-30XII solar powered calculator. Uh, the button is for the percent is press second first and then the left parenthesis because the parenthesis of uh, the percentage button percentage symbol is on top of the length left parenthesis. So that's press second and then left parenthesis. Here are a couple games we're going to play with the students in my classes. So let's get on to what we need to get to. So first we're going to find the percent of a number. This one is pretty uh, important and has a lot of applications we're going to be dealing with this in our class. So finding the percent, 8 percent of 60. So let me get my calculator because I know of means time. So let me type 8 percent. So I would press second and left parenthesis. But I have the TI-34, and it has a percent button built in right there. So times 60. And that will give you my answer when I press Enter, 4.8. Let's check that, 4.8. So we just got the uh, value of percent of a number. All it is is just multiplying the percent times the number. All right, um, the steps to find the percent of a number, we change the percent to a decimal or a fraction if you don't have a calculator, but the main thing is you have to multiply uh, the two items, percent as well as the number. I want you to notice though, I mentioned earlier that uh, this is a pretty popular application when it comes down to dealing with sales taxes, discounts, gratuity tips, commissions, all of these uh, applications are found by using these two steps, so multiplying the percent times that. So if you check my uh, teacher video, YouTube videos, you'll find uh, I have uh, covered these and we've gone into them. So let's get on with it. Here's a nice formula that you can use for all three of the percent problems, by the way. So percent would be on the left side and over 100 and item, whatever you're talking about part of the whole, the number next to is for the part, the number next to of is another way of saying it. So let's look at some problems using this formula. Rosa scored a grade of 60% on her math exam. She got 12 questions correct. If each question is worth the same value, how many questions are on the test? Okay, so we're going to be comparing a couple things. We're going to be comparing uh, her her percent grade to the actual questions because we're looking for questions on the test. So how many questions? So she got a 60% on her test. She got 12 questions correct. And we want to know how many questions on the test. They're all worth the same value. So I'm going to put my percent over here as I have it in the formula. I'm comparing that to questions, Q for questions. I'm going to set up my proportions, which are equal ratios or equal fractions. And I'm going to go on and put in what I know and work it out. So let's put in what we know about percent, 60%. So the 60 we go on the top because that is the grade that she got. And 100 is always on the bottom for percentage. Now the question, there were 12 questions that she got right. So she, if she would have got all of the questions right, I know she would have got 100. But I don't know how many questions there were on the test. So I'm going to put an X down here for, for the number of questions that are on the test because I don't know. But I do know she got 12 questions correct. That is the part of the test that she got correct. So that's why they say part. 
and the whole number of questions would be the number, the total number of questions that are on the test. So now we're coming up to our favorite part of finding a missing term when we have proportions. You remember we cross multiply, and if you check out my video on solving proportions, we have done that there if you forgot. So we cross multiply, 60 times x is going to equal to 12 times 100. 12 times 100 is 1200, and 60 times x is 60x. So let's divide both sides by 60, and that'll give us our answer. So divide by 60, divide by 60, and you can get your calculator, but this is not too bad. Uh, cut off the zero at the end, and 12 divided by 6 is 2, and I have a zero left over. So my answer would be 20. So there are 20 questions that are on the test. So that's what I'm going to put down as my answer, 20 questions. And let's check it and see. And you can check it yourself and get your calculator as a matter of fact I think I'll check it myself clear this if you got 12 questions right out of which means divided by 60 I'm sorry 20 questions that should give us a decimal point of 0 0.6 and if we change that to a percent remember we multiply by a hundred in order to change the decimal to a to a percentage and that would give us the 60 grade which they say that you got good question all right so there were 20 questions on the test so 20 is our answer i want you to look at it in a different light though 12 is 60 percent of what number so you can in put these numbers here in the formula, and I want you to notice we used 12 and 60%. This was the same question that you just did a few seconds ago. So you should get the same answer. So take a look at it. All right, check your understanding. I hope you're understanding what's going on so far. If not, rewatch the video, write down your questions, bring them in. Let's continue. Rosa scored a grade of 84% on her math exam. Good going, Rosa. If each question is worth the same value and there are 25 questions on the test, how many did she get correct? So this time we're doing a little bit differently. We're looking for the number of questions that were correct. So let's again get our setup. We have our percent on the left side. So let's put that there. We're going to compare that to questions again on her test. I'm setting up my equal fractions or my proportions. And now let me input the numbers. So let's see. Let's get right. Um, I know she got an 84%. So that means the 84 goes on top. And 100 always goes on the bottom. Now, let's talk about the number of questions. There were 25 questions on the test. So that was the whole test. So that means if she got all 25 questions right, she would get 100. So I'm going to put 25 on the bottom because that's the whole uh, number of questions on the test. That's all of the total. How many questions did she get correct? So what part of the test did she get correct? So I'm going to put an X here because that's the part. And now we go back to our same old method of cross multiplication. 25 times 84, and I'm going to need a calculator for that. And 100 times X. So 100 times X is 100 X. And 84 times 25. So let me get my calculator out. Let me clear this stuff first. Get this over a little bit. 
84 times 25, big number, 2,100, good number. And that's easy to divide. All right, so 2,100 is what it equals to when we multiply, and that's equal to 100x. So 100 times what is 2,100, and all I'm going to do is just divide by 100, and that will give me my answer. And this is nice because we have two zeros at the end, which we can cut off. And that will give us a nice 1 underneath it. And 21 divided by 1, that will give us a grade. Oh, I'm sorry, 21 questions that she got correct. So she got 21 questions correct. So let's check it. Correct. So nice job, Rosa. 21 questions correct. And let's even get our calculator involved one more time. Because if she got 21 questions correct out of how many questions were on the test? They said 25. So out of, which means divided by 25, press enter, that'll give us a decimal of 0.84. And remember to change the decimal, you can move it over uh, two places to the right to make it a percent, or you could just multiply by 100. So multiply by 100, take that answer, and that'll give us 84, which was her percent grade. Nice going, Rosa. Okay, let's look at this. I want to show you again, 84% of 25 is what number, which is the same thing you just did. And I this time I'm going to actually demonstrate uh, what you're doing here. So let's get our formula. At the end, I'm going to put 84, because this is our percent on this side. So the N is the 84. So there's our N. There's our 100. That goes underneath that on the percent side. And on the question, quest, on the part of the whole side, the number next to is, is what? So there is no number next to is. So I'm going to put a question mark. The number next to of is 25. And if you look at what we just did a few seconds ago, that's the same thing that we just did. So that's how we handle that in using this uh, number next to is and of. So you'll get the same answer as we just got. Okay, let's keep going. Hopefully you're understanding everything. If not, take a look at the video again and go slow. Write down your questions and hopefully you'll get it. All right, here's another question with Rosa. Rosa did not know her grade. Whoa. On her math exam, if each question is worth the same value and there are 30 questions on the test, so there are 30 questions on the test, and she got 12 correct. Okay, so at least we know how many she got correct out of 30. What's her grade? So we're trying to find her percent. So we don't have the percent. So so let's get this going here. So I'm going to draw my percent over here and compare that to, again, the questions that we're talking about. I make my equal fractions. And let's get blue. All right. We don't know her, her grade, so I don't know what her grade is. Out of 100, because 100 is the highest grade she can get, but we don't know what her score is, so I'll put a little N there. Now, we do know that she got 12 correct out of 30. Now, which one goes on the top? Which one do you think? If you said 12, that's correct, because 12 is part of the ones that she got of the 30 questions that were on the test. If she got all 30 questions right, that would be all of them and she'd get 100. So 30 would give you to 100. 12 would give you the part uh, 
of the grade that you got out of 100. So now we got our equal fractions again, our proportions. Let's do what we normally do one more time. Cross multiply. So we're going to mul cross multiply 30 times n and 12 times 100. So 12 times 100 is just 1,200, 12 with two zeros. And now I have to divide that by 30, and I'll be done. And I can be able to tell Rosa what she got, so that way it won't be a mystery to her. So divide by 30, 1,200 divided by 30, and again, I have a zero at the end, so I can do some nice canceling out. So let me cancel out the zero here. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. And I have a 0 there, so I'll put down that 0. So, Rosa, you only got 40. Oh, no, Rosa. That's not too good. I don't think your parents are going to be happy about that. So, Rosa got a 40 on this test. It must have been a tough math, math test. So, sorry, Rosa, but you got a 40. So let's check that just to make sure. Let's get our calculator. And as we did before, we know that Rosa got 12 right out of, which means divide, 30. And let's press enter. There's her decimal point. And we want to change that to a percent. We'll either move over two places to the right, the decimal point, or just multiply by 100. And that'll give you her grade, which was 40. Okay. Okay, let's look at this. Again, there's the same question again, looking for the percent. So you can put your part, I mean, your is and of in there and work it out. You'll get the same answer. So check your understanding. I hope you are getting something out of the movie. If not, rewatch it again and write down your questions, bring it in. Here's some practice problems with the is and um words, so give it a shot. And I think there's one more down there. Full screen. I just can't see that last one. Let me see if I can pull it down. There we go. So there's that last one. So give them a shot and see if you can get the answer on your own using uh, the formula. Here's one more. So I hope you found the lesson easy and write, write down any questions that you need to bring in. Remember my other videos on YouTube. I made a video about how to find your test score, by the way, and uh, I think you'll like it. It was very short. So check out our latest math release, PKMS Math Prep 18. It's a very good video. We're working on Math Prep 19 this year. So my channel name is Dan Robinson. You can tweet me at DRobMath one so please keep giving us thumbs up if you like our videos what we're doing comment and let us know what we can do to help you out even further so i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope this will help you in the future bye bye